Hey there, my friend, Grant Baldwin here from The Speaker Lab. I'm the host of The Speaker Lab podcast, author of The Successful Speaker Book. I appreciate you uh, taking a second to hang out with me here. So uh, I love all things podcasting. I've been in the podcasting space for about eight years now, have hosted uh, almost 600 episodes uh, of my own podcast. I've been a guest on hundreds of podcasts before. So I consume podcasts on a daily basis. I love all things podcasting. And one of the things that I love about podcasting is it connects to my other favorite thing or one of my other favorite things, which is speaking. So I've been in the speaking industry for, for about 16 years now, and I love uh, I love speaking. I love standing on a stage, sharing a message, but more importantly now, uh, I love working with other speakers to help them share their message. And so that's the world that I have been in. So I know as a podcast host or podcast guest that your desire is to share a message and podcasting is one way to do that. But speaking, being in front of a live audience, connecting with that audience is another way to go about doing that. And so what I want to do is I want to just quickly walk through if you wanted to book more speaking gigs and especially if you wanted to get paid what are the steps that you need to take so i want to give you five steps for booking paid speaking engagements all right so taking your message from the virtual to the in-person or in fact because of the pandemic there's been a lot more virtual speaking opportunities that you can still get paid for so there's a lot of opportunities now to spread your message to connect with audiences both online via a podcast but as well offline via speaking so before we get into that let me give you the quick nutshell of how i got into speaking. So I'm actually, I'm married to my high school sweetheart. Oh, isn't that precious? Uh, we have uh, just celebrated our 20 year uh, wedding anniversary. We've been together 25 years and uh, we have three beautiful daughters. So it's me and a house full of women. It's the absolute best. I really, really love it. Love my girls. As much as I enjoy speaking and podcasting and being an entrepreneur, my most important roles are being a good husband, being a good father. And so uh, I actually went to Bible college. I was a youth pastor for a little while. And it gave me a lot of opportunities to speak, a lot of at bats. And, and speaking is one of the things I enjoyed. I wanted to do more, but I just, I had no idea how do you actually consistently find gigs? And maybe you're in a similar spot where maybe you've done some speaking before and you've had some gigs that have fallen in your lap or word of mouth or referral or someone heard your podcast. And you're like, I would love to do more of that, but I, I just don't know, like, how do you find gigs and who hires speakers and how much do you charge and what do you speak about? And how does this mysterious speaking world work? And so that's exactly where I was at. And so again, if we go back 16, 17 years, years or so, there wasn't any podcast, there wasn't any books or resources or tools on being able to find and book gigs or how the speaking industry worked. So I found myself just emailing and stalking other speakers, harassing them, just the constant, can I pick your brain type of emails and learned a couple of things and got to a point where I was able to book a few gigs and parlay that into more gigs and more gigs and got to a point where I was doing about 60 or 70 gigs a year. And I absolutely loved it, but I had a lot of people who asked me like, Hey, I want to be a speaker. How would I go about doing that? And so that's when I started the speaker lab. And that's what we do today is we work with speakers who are just like yourself at any stage of their career, helping them understand how to find and book paid speaking engagement. So again, what I want to do is I just want to walk through quickly five steps. We call it the Speaker Success Roadmap. It makes the acronym SPEAK, S-P-E-A-K. So whether you're a brand new speaker, just getting started, you don't know what you don't know, or maybe you've been doing a few gigs here or there, you would like to get paid or get paid more or just do more gigs. This is going to give you the roadmap that you need to follow. All right. First step in the process, the S stands for uh, select a problem to solve. Select a problem to solve. Now, this is two key questions that you need to be thinking about. Number one is who do you speak to? And number two, what problem do you solve for that audience? Now, one of the ways to think about this is we always tell speakers that you want to be the steakhouse and not the buffet. Be a steakhouse, not the buffet. What we mean by that is let's imagine we were going for a bite to eat and we were looking for a good steak. Okay. Uh, we could do one of two things. We could go to a buffet where steak is one of a hundred different things that they offer and they're all mediocre, or we could go to a steakhouse where they do one thing, but they do that one thing really, really, really well. They don't do seafood. They don't do pasta. They don't do tacos. They do steak. And as counterintuitive as it is, whenever it comes to speaking, we want to do the same thing. We want to narrow it down and solve one specific problem for one specific audience. Now, the mistake that oftentimes speakers make is we feel like we need to spread the net as far and wide as possible. And so sometimes Sometimes I'll ask speakers, hey, who, tell me about who you speak to. And they say, well, I, I speak to people. I, I speak to humans. My message is for everybody. Or the question of like, well, okay, what do you speak about? It's like, well, what do you want me to speak about? I can speak about anything. I can speak about business or entrepreneurship or family or faith or sports or podcasting or whatever. It's like, no, no, you, you don't want to try to be the buffet. You want to be the steakhouse. Here's another way of thinking about it. Let's imagine, God forbid, that you had a brain issue. All right. You have a choice. You could go to your local family medical doctor. They are a doctor. They went to medical school. They've probably performed a surgery or two before. They know more about the brain than you or I, but 
not a brain doctor, not a brain surgeon. Or you could go to a brain surgeon where that's all they do day in and day out. They have one specialty and it is to fix brain issues. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to, you know, I, I trust my local family medical doctor, but if, they've, if they don't know that much about brains or, or haven't performed brain surgery, I don't want them working on my brain. I want to go to the person that solves one specific problem for one specific audience. You understand this whenever it comes to your podcast. You don't want to create a podcast that's for anybody and everybody about everything. Like you imagine, I think back to whenever maybe you were you were starting your podcast or when you were trying to appear as a guest on podcasts and you're thinking through the different ones you're like i can appear on any podcast about anything like that doesn't work when you are even when you are selecting which category uh your your podcast should appear in within itunes you can't be like they it appear in all of them like it just doesn't work like that so again the, the misunderstanding or the misconception is that we need to spread the net as far and wide as possible. And the opposite is actually the case. The more narrow, the more clear, the more focused you are, the easier it is to actually find a book gig. So first part of the process, write that down. S, select a problem to solve. Next part of the process is P, prepare your talk prepare your talk. And so once you're clear on what the problem is that you're trying to solve, then let's talk about how you create the solution to that. Now, the good thing is for you as a podcast or a podcast guest that you have a lot of experience with as, as, a, as a speaker, as a communicator. And so you've probably gotten good at sharing stories and, and making a point and keeping it tight and keeping it concise. And so it's the same thing is true whenever it translates to on stage. Now, obviously, if you are on stage, it's live. And so there's no editing, there's no going back, there's no, hey, can we do that again? Uh, you have to make sure that you spend the time practicing preparing, which is one of the best things that any speaker can do is in order to overcome those nerves or make sure that you are ready is to spend the time practicing and preparing the best speakers in the world. They don't just scribble some ideas on a napkin and hop up and wing it and hope it all magically works out. It doesn't work like that. So you really want to spend the time practicing and preparing. The other thing to know is when we talk about preparing your talk or preparing the solution to the problem that you're going to solve is there's a lot of ways that you can go about doing that. Meaning you could do a keynote, could do a workshop, could do a breakout, could do a, a seminar, could be a small group for several days, could be a large group for a small period of time. There's not one right or wrong way to speak. And so there's a lot of different options there. So you got to kind of decide and, and probably oftentimes like try a couple different formats to see what makes sense and what works best for you. So that's the P, prepare your talk. Next part of the process is E, establish yourself as the expert. Establish yourself as the expert. So there's two key marketing tools that every speaker needs. You need a website and you need a demo video, website and demo video. So let's first, let's talk about your website. In this day and age, if you don't have a website, you don't exist. It is hard for people to take you seriously. So you wanna make sure that you have that website, a website that communicates clearly who you are, what problem that you solve, who you speak to, has some testimonials, some, some ideally pictures of you speaking, also has what we would call a menu of topics that maybe you speak about. So think about this, like if you were to go to a restaurant and you sit down, the first thing that they do is they give you a menu. Here's the choices that we can prepare for you at this restaurant versus as a speaker, if we say, well, what do you want me to speak about? I can speak about a variety of different things. That doesn't work. Like they want, they're looking for what is your best dish, so to speak, what's your best talk that you can present that's going to be a good fit for that audience. So you wanna have a website. And the other thing is you wanna have a demo video. Now, what exactly is a demo video? I want you to think about this like a, a movie trailer, okay? So uh, you, they take like a, a 90 minute, a two hour movie and they boil it down to two or three minutes in, in the form of a trailer. And the point of a trailer is to make people want to see more right? To make people want to see more. And so whenever you are watching a trailer, the idea is like, ah, oh, I, I, I want to see that. I want to, um, they have an idea of who the plot, what the plot is, the theme, the, the genre, who's in it. And again, the point of the demo video and the point of the movie trailer is for people to be like, ah, oh, I got to, I got to catch that. Okay. When an event planner is considering hiring you, they are making the decision of, should I hire you versus this other speaker? The other thing to remember is that event planners are in the risk mitigation business. And what I mean by that is that whenever they are, whenever they hire you and put you up on stage, they are taking a risk. I assume that this person's going to do a good job, that they're not going to embarrass me, that they're not going to say anything inappropriate or bad or rude or whatever it may be. So they want that demo video as a way just to determine whether or not you're a good fit for their event. So those two, two marketing assets are very important, a website and a demo video. All right, let's keep moving on. Next part is A, acquire paid speaking gigs. 
acquire paid speaking gigs. Now, this is the part that oftentimes we want to fast forward to. Grant, just tell me how to book gigs, right? Uh, but again, are you clear that you have to have these other foundational pieces in place first? You have to be clear on the problem that you solve and who you solve that for. You got to be clear on what your solution is and preparing your talk. You got to make sure that you have marketing assets available and accessible for event planners and decision makers. And then we get to the A, acquire paid speaking gigs. Now, for this, you want to actually have some type of system or process. What you don't want to do is just say, okay, I have my website. I have my demo video. Now I just sit back and I wait for the phone to ring. It's the same thing with podcasting. Whenever you start a podcast, you don't want to just sit back and hope people magically find you. And same thing as a guest. You don't want to just say, you know, post on social media and say, hey, I'm a guest. If, you, if you're looking for a, a guest for your podcast, let me know. Like it doesn't work like that. The best thing that you can do is direct one-to-one -one reach out. Not just kind of a, a spray and pray type of approach, but be really, really clear on who you speak to, what problem that you solve, and how you solve their problem for that audience. So having a system in place that not only you reach out, but also follow up and being more proactive than reactive and hopefully and, uh, and hoping that people just magically find you. All right, so that's the A, acquire paid speaking gigs. Last part of the process is K, know when to scale. What I mean by this is that there's a lot of people who are interested in speaking, but are also interested in podcasting, doing a course, doing coaching, doing consulting, writing a book. You can do all the things, but you can't do all the things at once. Something's going to come first. Something's going to come last. So you've got to be clear about how does speaking fit into the mix. Now, as you are thinking about, okay, how does speaking connect with my podcast or the podcast guesting that I'm already doing, you're probably already speaking on a topic there. So you probably already have some, some potential opportunities that you can connect the dots between what you're doing with podcasting and with what you might be doing with speaking. So again, that's the five-step roadmap that we teach our students. Again, select a problem to solve, prepare your talk, establish your as the expert. A, acquire paid speaking gigs, and K, know when to scale. Now, the best thing you can do at this point is take some form of action. Don't just listen to this and be like, oh, that's some nice ideas. If you're serious about finding and booking gigs, then you need to take the next step. Again, my name is Graham Bolden. I'm the host of the Speaker Lab podcast. If you're interested in everything we covered and talked about here, you want to dig into it further, then definitely uh, check out the Speaker Lab podcast. Check out the Successful Speaker book. And I'll give you one more free tool. People ask me all the time, Grant, how much should I charge as a speaker? And the answer is it depends, which is a horrible answer. So we put together a free speaking fee calculator. So if you're interested in that, you can check it out by going to myspeakerfee.com, myspeakerfee.com. Totally free. Answer a couple of questions. It'll spit out a number of what you should be charging for your next gig. So again, go in there, plug in some numbers, play around. And uh, again, totally free, myspeakerfee.com. So again, thanks for letting me hang out with you. I hope you have a great day. Take action on pursuing your speaking dreams and goals. And we'll see you on the other side.